whirlwind romance becomes the stuff of nightmares for one woman who says she has been living in fear for her life. Thank you for joining us. I'm Carrie Sharp. And I'm Hunter Hoagland. A lot to get to here at 6 o'clock. That woman says there is no reason why the man who allegedly assaulted her should be out on bond, especially since he was already on probation. News Channel 5 investigative reporter Levi Ismail shows us why a blind side within the Davidson County bond system has some victims constantly on edge. The Davidson County magistrates can be the first line of defense for domestic violence victims who need GPS monitoring on abusive partners. What we discovered is often the people making these decisions don't have all the facts they need to better protect victims. Let me know when you're good, Brian. These are the interviews that happen few and far between. Not because people like Don Bauman don't exist. Cameras are rolling, leave whenever you're ready. But because by the time we hear their stories. Yeah. Sometimes it's too late. The entire thing has been overwhelming, right? From the 23rd and every day after. Bauman says there's no magic wand to undo what otherwise may have felt like a fairy tale romance. The kind where you move to Nashville, reconnect with an old friend, and propose to that man in a matter of two months. Every day he just showed me a side of himself that I knew I wanted to spend the rest of my life with this man. Only weeks later, and Bauman saw another side, a side that compelled her to seek out this order of protection, telling the courts, I am in fear for my life and safety. Bauman remembers bits and pieces of that night on Broadway, she says, eventually turned violent. He took my cell phone from me. Then I remember being punched with a closed fist. At first, Bauman was willing to blame her husband's alcohol relapse and move on. But then came this. He answered my phone and told my best friend he was going to make me gone. Like, literally, this came from nowhere. This time, Bauman told Metro Nashville Police what happened, and soon after, officers arrested her husband on charges of domestic assault with bodily injury and violating the order of protection she had just filed. Um, when I called the jail to make sure he was there, I told them he's on felony probation. Like, is anyone following up? She told officers, members of the court, attorneys, anyone she could about her husband's priors, expecting him to be held with no bond. Instead, bond was set at a combined $5,000 for both charges, and soon her husband was released. What's that like telling all of these different agencies that this man is dangerous and then not seeing the follow through? Scary, really scary, because I'm out here hiding in the middle of nowhere, fearful to go to work. I would say the system overall uh, continues to fail people. Metro Nashville Police Chief John Drake didn't hold back his frustration earlier this year over a judicial system he felt let dangerous people post bond and walk too easily. Once we arrest them and they're back out, I mean, that's a, that's a problem. I understand the frustration and I understand the uh, optics. But General Sessions Judge Jim Todd told News Channel 5 back in May that judicial magistrates in Davidson County, the ones who set bond in this building, don't have access to the National Crime Information Center or NCIC, which means they set bond without knowing important context, like if you've been charged with anything in a different county. The reality of it is we can't set bonds with a Ouija board. In Bauman's case, News Channel 5 investigates found her husband has an extensive domestic violence criminal history, where since 2011, he's been charged with violating an order of protection and aggravated stalking different women on six different occasions, most of which happened just one county over. He, he shouldn't have been eligible for bail. He should have been put on a, a probation hold. But nobody talked to anybody. The thing is, other law enforcement who share the same building as the magistrates do have access to NCIC. Judge Todd says it could be as simple as sharing resources that are already under the same roof. But that hasn't been the case. Instead, he's working with the Tennessee Bureau of Investigations so magistrates have their own access. The public needs to know that the court system is well aware of this issue and has been and continues to work very hard. None of what's been proposed changes the fact that Bauman still fears for her life. The man she once knew has a record of stalking, assaulting others, and violating protective orders, all of which she says could have made a compelling argument for GPS monitoring if 
the magistrates knew of her husband's past. Getting an ankle monitor, that's, that would be the game changer. Bauman remembers the stories of Lauren Johansson and many other domestic violence victims who were killed after their partners made bail and right before trial. I never dreamed this would be part of my life. I mean, I'm an educated professional, older woman. I mean, it's craziness. It's often considered the most dangerous time for any domestic violence victim. But that hasn't stopped Bauman from speaking out when others can't. I don't want to be a Lauren. And I think that's a fair request. I just think it's fair that I shouldn't have to worry about being murdered. That's all I'm asking. It's important to point out that there are other magistrates in different counties around the state that also don't have access to NCIC. We've reached out to TBI to find out what it will take for these courts to get access, and we're still waiting to hear back. Since our interview with Bauman, she says she's relieved after her husband was taken back into custody in a different county after allegedly violating his probation. He now has a court appearance later this month and could face having his probation revoked. With News Channel 5 Investigates, I'm Levi Ismail. Levi, it is eye-opening reporting. As you can tell, Levi is passionate about helping people who have been affected by domestic violence, and our reporting helped to pass a new law that honors these two women who were killed by their abusers. It's called the Debbie and Marie Domestic Violence Protection Act. It requires GPS monitoring of the most violent domestic offenders, and it is the first of its kind in the United States. But our investigates team also found that the law leaves enough discretion for magistrates to decide if GPS monitoring applies to each case, which some victims have argued will put people at risk. The law also allows enough discretion for suspects to be released on bond if they can afford to pay for one of these devices and they are no longer considered a threat to the victim. Lawmakers who propose the law say they plan to take this issue back up in the legislature next session. If you have questions or would like to share your story, email Le Levi. His address is levi.ismail at newschannel5.com.